in this video I'm going to show you how to simplify fractions. It's not at all that difficult, but I have to say you'll find it a lot easier if you've got excellent times table knowledge, if you're quite happy finding common factors. So that's if you can recognize when two numbers are both divisible by another number. And if you can do that quite easily, you're going to find simplifying fractions easy. And if you can divide in your head, then that's going to make life easier for you. You can divide on paper, you know, writing stuff down. That's absolutely fine. But it will just take a little bit longer and you'll be slowed down. Okay, simplifying fractions. You may also see this written as reducing fractions. You may also see it written as cancelling fractions they all mean the same thing which is why it can lead to some confusion but you've basically got three words simplifying reducing or cancelling fractions and what they mean is taking a fraction with um, larger numbers than necessary dividing the top and the bottom by the same number to leave us with smaller numbers on the top and the bottom and the advantage of having smaller numbers on the top and the bottom and yet still having an equivalent fraction is that it's much easier to kind of picture in our heads exactly the, the proportion that we're talking about. So um, for example, 150 over 200. Okay, that, when you simplify it, can be simplified down to three quarters. Now in my head, I'm not very good at picturing something divided into 200 pieces and then you know, considering only 150 of them. I can picture though what three quarters looks like and that makes it far easy for me to, com to make comparisons with other fractions. So for example, let's say, I don't know, there's a survey, 100, 200 people are surveyed, 150 of them you know, are, have excellent times table knowledge. Well, what does 150 over 200 mean to me? How do I compare that? Is that a, is that a good fraction? I don't really, you know, it's difficult to picture. But if I see this as three quarters, uh, and I know, you know I can visualize what three quarters looks like, then the statistics from that survey are, are more meaningful to me. I can, I can interpret them much more easily. So there's a reason for simplifying fractions. It makes it more straightforward to visualize, it makes it more straightforward to do further calculations with as well. Let's say we were, for example, then going to try and do um, 150, over 200 plus 7 eighths. Okay? Far easier if we were working with a smaller fraction but equivalent. So equivalent to um, 150 over 200, we said it was 3 quarters. Far easier to go about working out what 3 quarters plus 7 eighths is um, instead of working with fractions that are using large numbers. Okay, let's get on with it. We're looking for an equivalent fraction to 8 over 48, but that uses smaller numbers. So we don't want to change the size of the fraction, if you like. We're happy changing the numbers, but only if we change them both by the same factor or multiplier so that we don't actually change the proportion. What does that mean? That means we need to find a number that goes into the top number that also goes into the bottom number. We need to find a common factor, okay, a factor of the numerator that is also a factor of the denominator. Right. This one's not difficult. Okay. They both divide by 2. Dividing both of them by 2 gives me a fraction of 4 over 24. Right. That has now been simplified. Okay. That's what I mean by simplifying. Dividing the top and the bottom by a common factor. Now, I'm not saying that's in the simplest form. I'm going to save that for the next slide but I have gone through the process of simplifying. I've simplified it once at least. Next one, 15 over 45. Both of these divide by 5. Okay, so when I divide them both by 5, I get 3 over 9. Right, that's now been simplified. Hopefully it's a little bit easier to picture what 3 over 9 looks like than it is to, compare f uh, to think about what 15 over 45 looks like. Okay, last one. 27 over 36. Both divide by 3. Sorry, that squiggle is a 3. Let's do that a bit better. 
Right, if they both divide by 3, then the fraction I have after I've simplified is 9 over 12. Okay, simplified. All right. Now, you'd be wrong to think that you've done all the simplifying you can do with those three fractions. You can actually simplify them further. Okay, so let's talk about that on the next slide. Simplest form. You might also see this written as um, simplest form or lowest terms. Okay, if it says reduce a fraction to its lowest terms, that's the same as asking you to write the fraction in its simplest form. So what you tend to get is it might say um, add three quarters plus um, plus six eighths and write the fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so you would come to some kind of answer and then you would have to simplify it um, all the way to the very end. Okay, what do I mean by that? Right, well, 48 over 72. We'll start by simplifying it, dividing top and bottom by 2. Okay, so 2 goes into the top and the bottom in this case. And I would get 24 over 36. Yes, it's been simplified, but no, I haven't written it in its lowest terms or in the simplest form. Why? Well, because this fraction, this new one, can be simplified further. Okay, so it's not in, in the simplest form until I cannot simplify any further. And what does that mean in practice? Well, that means that I keep simplifying until there are no common factors in the numerator and the denominator, except obviously for the number one. Okay, one is a common factor of, of any pair of numbers, but we're not really interested in dividing the top and the bottom by one. So let's think of another factor, okay, for 24 and 36. Um, well, you know what? These both divide by 2 as well. So that will give us 12 over 18. Yep, simplified, but still not fully simplified. Okay, I can keep going. 12 over 18, still both divide by 2 actually. What do we get? We get 6 over 9. Yep, that's simplified. But, and this is, the, this is one of the mistakes that students often, often make, is to say, right, I've simplified it. I've simplified it three times already. Surely that's the simplest form. Look, I can't divide these both by two. Well, I never said okay, that simplifying was only about dividing by two. I always said that it was about looking for a common factor. So a common factor of six and nine is three. And what do you get once you've simplified that? 2 over 3 of 2 thirds. Right, that has been simplified. Let's ask ourselves again, are there any common factors of 2 and 3? No. Apart from, apart from 1, obviously. I'm discounting 1 because it's boring dividing b both numbers by 1. I won't change very much. Um, so the simplified form, the, f the fully simplified form, so the simplest.